Uh, so uh, welcome again and uh, very good evening. So we are uh, on the webinar on improving return on investment in marketing using RFM analysis. And in this webinar, we are mainly going to understand that for an e-commerce business, how the decisions are made in order to spend the marketing budget, which can be more efficient and uh, help in improving the return on the investment done on the marketing. Right. So what are the ways and uh, how do we segment the customers on which set of the customers we should spend more money on the marketing and give them offers on which set of customer we should not spend more marketing and how do we categorize them using the data science approach we are going to understand that when it comes to improving return on marketing and improving return on investment which is done on the marketing there are multiple approach uh, which are followed up one of the approaches in data science, we use RFM analysis um, that uh, pattern recognition in unsupervised learning we use. So there are multiple uh, approach which are used. The one that we are going to discuss today is going to be data science approach mostly and uh, that is going to be to understand uh, what are the basic techniques which are used by e-commerce companies mainly to provide the customers a certain offer so as to retain them, right? So this all part comes under the category called behavioral analytics. Behavioral analytics is one of the part of data science, which uh, comes under finding out patterns from the data, which could be helpful in taking business decisions. Right. So what exactly is behavioral analytics? Let's understand by certain questions. So behavioral analytics is used to improve the engagement with the customers in case uh, the customers are gonna leave a particular brand or are gonna churn a particular organization to retain them right so it could be used for any kind of business whether you talk about banking finance uh, telecom telecom companies widely use uh, churn modeling and uh, customer segmentation based on that churn modeling churn prediction of customers recommendation systems to re retain those customers with the best offers to improve revenue what are the different checkout uh, form which can affect the revenue how to improve the marketing uh, roi and uh, what are the different ways to improve the user engagement into the app? What are the different marketing techniques which could attract users in a particular app? Right. So when is the right time to post a marketing offer or who are, which are the right offers to post according to the data, data science and the pattern recognized from a particular data of our customers? So which are the different elements impact the customer mindset? This all part comes under behavior analytics. And uh, one section of that is uh, RFM analysis. So let's go ahead and understand what exactly is RFM analysis and what do we do in that? So RFM stands for uh, recency, frequency, monitoring. So the RFM and our key important pillars which decide the importance and the value of a customer for a particular brand. What do we mean by RF and M? Let's see that. So in RFM analysis, R stands for recency, F stands for frequency. So recency is like what was uh, how many days it's been since the customer has done the last purchase. The frequency could be how many total number of purchases the customer has done on a particular website. And the monetary is the total revenue or you can say total money the customer has spent on a particular website or a portal. So these are the three important pillars uh, which are usable, which are, which are something mostly used in data science approach to segment the customers and to find out which of the existing customers are more important as of now and, uh, and which of the particular segment needs more investment in terms of marketing so as to retain them and uh, which of the segment of customers are not that important in the sense like uh, we, we need not spend much of the money because that particular segment of customer is not uh, going to turn the turnaround uh, probability of a particular segment is not much so that segment should not be the most focused one or equally focused one as well right in a very general way let's say that uh, you talk about i go to every day amazon and i in a month i buy 10 to 12 products on amazon right and there could be my friend who just buys one product on amazon and but the one product he buys is probably costly and compared to the 10 products i buy so how do the e-commerce portal segment the customers and take decision that on which segment of the customers what amount of uh, 
focused should be spent or you can say how how much we should focus in terms of marketing in terms of providing offers in terms of providing discounts and uh, so as to improve the return on the investment done on the marketing right so there are certain rules to decide this right so uh, in a data sense approach we use quartile segmentation to decide and to take action so to understand further about what quartiles in how do we how do we segment our customers we need to understand one important concept of uh, uh, data science that we call quartiles let's go ahead and understand quartiles what exactly we mean by quartiles and uh, how do we decide that right so let's let's go ahead and see that so to understand the basic concept of quartile let's say that we have a uh, uh, certainly age of a certain customers in a particular bank right so for a particular bank or uh, for a particular brand, we have age of customers who are who have done some purchasing on a particular e-commerce portal, and their ages are like this. Let's say 18, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 24, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, what do you mean by exactly quartile? The quartile is all about like uh, you arrange them in a sequence, right? So you arrange them in a sequence. And uh, after that, so if I look at the total count of the customers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and let me make a little bit more. 17 and uh, 8, 19, 20. Okay, if I arrange them in a, a particular sequence model, so the lowest one I can see is 12 and then 18 and then uh, particularly well this is gonna take a little time so I'm gonna be a little quick with this 21 22 and uh, uh, 23 I don't have why 24 is occurring two times so 24 24 25 26 there's no 27 there's no 28 there's no 29 there's no 30 and after that 31 is not there and after that I get 32 and uh, 30 to one more time and 30 to one more time and they are after 34 36 well this is a little uh, very tedious job to do it manually well we have python programs and syntaxes to do this job well look at that well this is just to understand the basic concept of uh, what exactly we mean by quartiles right. so 36 we are and after that you can let me know in chat box which one is so something that i should write for you well 35 i forgot it seems 35 should be there two times Sorry, 35, 35, 36, and then, uh, well, it comes to, I guess, I can see here, 45, 65. Well, so that should make me complete, right? So let me check with that. Well, so let me count it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It seems I missed up something. Okay. And that has come three times. Well, so I, I, I just need to increase this up 25, 26. 25, 26 is, is something that should be two times. Okay, so let me insert here something. Okay, so I'm going to make this one as uh, 25, 26, 26, and 32. So now we have total 20 values. Now, if you look at this, everyone, so once we have arranged them in a sequence manner, the important part is to understand. If you look at this part, so this is the, the first value, the 12, 20, 20 values are there. So if you divide them into four, four sections, so till here we have 25 percentile value. Then you talk about here, you have 50% of customers are below 
the age of 32 years. And then you talk about the 75% of the customers are below 35 years. And then you have asked, like you can say three or four, that's what I mean, five values, right? So this is where you can say that uh, this particular section is, uh, uh, we can call it as Q1. This is another section can be called as Q2. And this section can be called as Q3 and this section can be called as Q4. Right, so this is how we divide, divide the data into quartiles. I think it's going to be ascending manner. First is going to be Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Right, so that's how you divide the data into quartiles. Right? So similarly, what we do is we calculate for our set of customers, we calculate the value of R, F, and M, recency, frequency, and moiety. Divide them into quartiles and then start segmenting them. Right. So I hope the understanding of quartiles is clear to all of you. Let me know if you have any question. Seems we are good so far. Okay. So let's go ahead further and uh, look in that, that how quartiles helps us in taking decision. Here we go. So we divide our data into the recency, frequency, and monetary values into quartile. So quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, quartile four, like that. And uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Well, when it comes to recency, we take in ascending the order. Uh, frequency, we take in descending order. Monetary, we take in descending order. Right? Because the uh, highest frequency is more of uh, the first, you can say rank, right? So you convert them in terms of ranks, right? And then rank the monetary as well, rank the recency as well. So recency is always ranked as less to high. You can say low to high. More frequency high to low, monetary should be high to low. Right? For example, recency in the sense if a customer has done one day ago transaction, it's more important. Frequency is more of it, the customer who has done the highest number of transactions, so that is more important. And lowest number of transactions is less important. So high to low. Monetary, highest monetary, highest money that uh, the largest amount that the customer has sent on the portal, that customer is more important. So monetary will go high to low. How to decide them? So uh, we divide all the customers' recency, frequency, monetary on the basis of these three parameters. We divide them in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 of recency, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 of frequency, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 of monetary. And this is the standard RFM rule is that if your customer lies into one, 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 that is, that means he is the most recent customer, he is the most frequent customer, and he always spends or she always spends largest amount or you can say large amount of money on the portal so those are the best customers and uh, those are those customers who bought most recently most often and spent the most money on the portal for these set of customers in order to improve your efficiency as a e-commerce business owner you should not provide them more price incentives you should always offer them new products and you should run loyalty programs for them Right, but uh, probably spending more price incentives may not generate more revenue because those are already your loyal customers. Then it comes to, again, the normal loyal customers, X, one X. It means that we don't care about uh, what's their recency, we don't care about the monetary, but they are the most frequent customers. So those are the most frequent customers and uh, we can again further segment them according to R and M and then analyze in which category they like. Big spenders, X, X, one. So those customers who spend the highest amount of money on their portal. So we should market them the most expensive product. We should, the, the portal should recommend them in terms of recommendation system, most expensive products. Then 311, right? So 311 in the sense, when it comes to the frequency, those are the best customers. When it comes to monetary, they are the best customers. But when it comes to recency, they have not bought or done the purchasing from our portal uh, since split long. That means those are the customers we are about to lose them. So those are the customers who haven't purchased for some time, but sometime back, they used to do purchasing very frequently and used to spend much amount of money on our portal. For them, we should run aggressive price incentives. We should provide them more discounts so as to get them back. All right. Then it comes 411. If your customer lies into the fourth quartile of recency, that means he has done purchasing from so long, he's among the oldest customers of yours, but since longer period of time, he has not or she has not done any kind of transaction. But before that, she, he or she or they used to do a lot of uh, uh, frequent transactions and that to very valuable transactions as well in terms of cost. 
for them those are still our lost customers and valuable customers run aggressive pricing model and high discounts for them and then the customers who lies into 444 those are the lowest customers and the low cost customer in the sense they don't uh, carry much value for us right so we should uh, as a company we should spend much of the money and the time in trying to reacquire those customers and this is how the model if we this is the very generic model to be followed up for improving the efficiency on the origins of return on the investment made on the marketing part right so all your customers data using some techniques has to be segmented into these certain categories you can see we have currently six categories and based on the six segments are the categories the marketing campaign the decisions to reacquire or how much monitoring is spent on the marketing to reacquire to retain to engage those customers has to be decided decided so that's that's what you talk about uh, using rfm analysis for behavior analytics and understanding the customer's behavior and based on that taking decision to improve the return on investment on marketing so we have got so far let me know if the basic understanding of this is clear to all of you Well, so since we are good so far, all right, any questions so far you have, let me know. Then we can look at one example to understand this much better. This example is not to probably many of you may not be good at Python programming. So I'm going to show an example using Python. Many of you may not be good at that. Uh, so this is just to understand, okay, this is how it is done, right? So later in the period, you can join any of your courses available at our uh, company and uh, uh, you can get started with Python programming. So we teach the Python in, from basics. So this is just to give you a glance. Okay, this is how things are done. This is how we can uh, perform this part and uh, we can find out the customers who belong to a particular segment. So we'll look at a very quick and uh, short and simple example, right? So here we go and start with that. So I'm gonna do programming in one of the IDE, which is Spider, which comes up with Anaconda, right? And uh, so don't get scared if you are not good with Python programming. Well, what I believe is it's, uh, world's easiest programming language. So uh, even if you are not a program, not from programming background, Python, you may find it's uh, more attractive, easy to learn and uh, interesting. So let's see the example that we're gonna see in this case. Okay, so let me go to that. So I have some data of uh, online retail customers taken from one of the portal called UCI. And let's see this data. Little heavy data, may take a little time to load. Here you go. So here we have data of around uh, 541,910 customers. And uh, the data is all about the invoice number of every customer. You can see we have data of invoice number of every customer, the stock code. So this is the online trading data in which the customer has done some trading on a particular portal. Right? So invoice number, the stock that they have traded, purchased or sold, the code of that stock. The name of the stock is available. You can consider it as a name of product in terms of e-commerce business. The quantity, right? So what is the quantity? The invoice date on which date they did the trading, the unit price, customer ID, and the country from where they did it. Well, so this is all about the data that we have so far. And uh, based on this, we have to find out that who are the best customers to on whom we should spend some money to do marketing and uh, 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 how should we segment our customers. So we have data of around 541,000 and somewhere from some samples, data sets, I mean, samples in a data set. Let's see that, how do we calculate? And then you, you see here, you don't have the value of RFM given here. So uh, you don't get RFM directly. You need to manipulate your data, do some computation on that, and find out the value of recency, frequency, and mine. The first thing we can do is, let's go ahead and load this data. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna copy the path of the sample, uh, data set, copy path, and here we go. So we're gonna use one of the very high performance package called Paint Us. 
So let me load the data. So data equals to pandas dot read CSV. And link paste it up. Well, that's why we're done with loading data set. But there is a challenge. You see, challenge is this data set is not a CSV file, it's an Excel file. Okay. So I, I should use not read CSV, should use it underscore Excel. Okay, and now let's see that are we able to read the data or not. So well, uh, understanding data and performing cleaning of data, manipulation of data is a, a little lengthy process and very interesting and very important process when it comes to data science, right? Uh, 50% in a standard data science, uh, standard data science project, 50 to 60% of your time will be spent only in wrangling of data, clearing it, and finding the important data and cal finding the important verticals. You can say pillars like RFM, which can be used for further computation, decision making, and analysis. So here you can see we have data of uh, what 5,000, sorry, 541,909 samples. And uh, uh, if you look at this, so. This invoice number and before the data is available. Let's look into that. If we have some missing values over here, so data info. So if I I, I should have used Jupyter notebook for this. Well, so if you look at here, we have some missing values into uh, uh, you can see description, but description is not that important. Quantity no missing values, but we have some missing values in customer ID. So there are some missing values available over here in terms of customer ID. So we should uh, probably uh, handle them. Well, when it comes to customer ID and here, we want to analyze the best customers. So those missing values, which are missing for cust particular customer ID, we will have to drop them. Because if you do not have a certain monetary or value of frequency, you could have replaced them with a mean mode or median or something. But uh, as this is for uh, the customer ID, which cannot be replaced by some mean mode median or some statistical parameter, we should drop those customers for whom we don't have their customer ID. Because if we don't have customer ID, even if we use them for analysis, we'll not be able to decide whether we should spend some money for them or not because we don't know their exact customer ID, right? So let's say uh, we're gonna drop those columns for when we don't have customer ID. So data equals to data, anything like we obtained us dot not null, for data dot, what is the name of column? So customer ID. So we want to drop this particular column. So now you can see here from 5,000, 541,000, we have, we are left with uh, 406,829 samples in which we don't have any customer ID missing. Okay. So that's, that's why we are left with that. And uh, uh, yeah, we are good to go ahead further. Right, we can still check if there are some other missing values which are important to us. Right, so the main objective is to calculate the value of R, F, and M. Right? And uh, with that, we, we need to go for it. Right? So if you look at other than that, uh, uh, if you look at other data, yeah. So how will we calculate R, F, M? So one of one of the important part you can see is like we have quantity and we have unit price. If we multiply the quantity with unit price, we can get the final monetary for a particular customer in a particular transaction. Now, when you look at the customer ID, you see a single customer has also done multiple transaction as well. A single customer, for example, this customer has done around uh, eight transaction, one seven five zero eight according to what is. Uh, uh, Visible on top, probably there could be some more transaction further down, right? So a customer has a multiple transaction as well. So that shows if we count that the customer ID number of occurrences of customer ID, we can get the frequency of a particular customer. The number of occurrences just by counting the number of occurrences of a particular customer ID, we can get the frequency of it. Multiplying quantity into unit price, we can get monetary of it. From the invoice date and the uh, last date when the data was posted, we can get the recent. What is important for us in a particular data set is the quantity, unit price, customer ID, and invoice date to calculate R, F, and M for a, a particular customer. Right. 
So we can go ahead and check out our RFM, frequency monitoring and frequency, and uh, work with that, right? So uh, let's let's look into that. So first thing that we'll do is we'll calculate the frequency. Right? So we can create a new column called DNA you know, of frequency. Right, so I'm going to go a little quick with this. Okay, so data frequency equals to data dot group by, and we're going to group by customer ID. That's there. And with that, we're going to do this. We're going to just count, we have to simply count the customer ID, right? So dot uh, customer ID dot transform. Here we can invoke a simple, I mean, we can use a simple lambda function to uh, transform that. So we just need to put here lambda x given, and what you need is the length of x. How many times that customer has, customer ID has come. So let's go ahead and do that. So with this, we'll be creating one column that will show the frequency of the customer, how many times the customer has done uh, transaction. So if you that. So, here you can see the last column that we get is for 17850 for this particular customer, we are getting the count as 312, right? Let's verify it, it's correct or not. So what you can do is data dot customer ID, where data dot customer ID equals to equals to 17850 dot count so what we received is it was 312 and uh, uh, here we can also see it as 312 right so that means our command which we have given over here is correct 312 so we could do that so far okay so here we have calculated the frequency of every customer right now next part is uh, to check the recency and then monitor right so for recency, if you look at the invoice date, so data dot, uh, look at the columns, what are different columns we have. So here we have one of the columns called invoice date. So data dot, invoice date dot max. What is the maximum date we have? The maximum date is somewhere around uh, 9th of uh, December, 2011, right? 9th of December, 2011. And what is the minimum date we have? Well, minimum date is not of much use. So we have first of December 2012, sorry, 2010. Right, so we are referring to max. Okay, so the max shows that, okay, on this date, probably at least we can say that the data would have been collected. Okay, so now let's say that uh, uh, what we want to do is, you know, simply take out with this date, we can take another date as uh, the next date of this, right? So the, the we can say the maximum date is around 9th of December. We can take 10th or 11th of December as a current date. So let's say that current date equals to pandas dot date time of 2011, comma 12, comma 11. That's our current date. So if you look at the distance of the current date and the, the last date, right? So if you look at that, let's say that C date, I should have written here C date. C date minus so that shows two dot days. It's not callable. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Same sided. Little mistake here. Well, so uh, uh, I, I should be getting them. I, I should get by dot days here like this. Yeah, it's a date and comma dot days should be. So you see, this shows that okay, it's a one day recent transaction, right? So similarly, if we just subtract all the dates with the C date, we'll get that how recent that transaction was. Now, a single customer might have done a number of transactions. 
the one that we should subtract is the minimum transaction, right? I mean, the, the, the minimum date, for example, is that I might have done a transaction on uh, 10th of December, 2011, 5th of January, 2012, 8th of January, 2012, 9th of March, 2012. So whatever is the maximum date, sorry, whatever is the maximum date on which I have done the transaction, that has to be subtracted from the C date to get that how recent the customer has contacted and uh, you can say has uh, logged on our website and done the transaction. And that will tell us the frequency, sorry, recency. Right? So let's say we can write here data dot recency as data dot recency equals to. So we have to analyze based on the invoice number. So data dot group by for a particular customer. Here group that customer by you can say customer ID and based on that uh, we have to use this column name call in what state and so we go and dot we can mention here dot transform lambda excess c date minus the max of x that's the maximum date right so that will tell us how recent the customer has done the transaction so with this part we'll be able to get the recency and then it comes to monetary so well in, in case of monetary we no simple idea we need to multiply the two columns which are the two columns you can see them so data dot uh, columns the unit price and uh, the quantity right so the two columns has to multiply and that will give us the monetary but we'll get uh, we have to all add all the monetary values for a particular customer as well that part also has to be done so let's let's do this last value is calculation of monetary okay so data of uh, monetary equals to i don't think that in general course we go this much faster this just to show you okay this is how we do it right this is how we teach in course so as to give you this that understanding okay so data dot quantity multiplied by data dot uh, uh, what, uh, what you call them? this is rate price multiplied by here and here that will give us the monetary but you see in this case monetary will be different for i mean a single customer has might, might have done number of transactions so you will have to add all the monetary values for that particular customer right so we have to do one more manipulation on this so you can say data dot monetary equals to data dot group by customer ID dot uh, monetary dot transform. Right. Well, uh, when it comes to data science part, this part can be done more easily in our programming. It just I'm a little used to it. I think that's the reason I'm going ahead with that. Here we go and lambda of x colon x dot sum. We have to just add all the monetary values, and here we go. So with this part, we'll be doing three important columns: the recency, frequency, and monetary. Right. So let's take those three important columns and the customer ID in the data separate data plane. So data two equals to data of. We can mention here we want this ID. And then we want this uh, the recency, you can say. Not recency. Frequency. And the monetary. Right. And here we go. Done with that. So data two is our main data frame. If I look at data two dot summary. So here you can see now. I'm sorry. Yeah, two is our data frame value. So data two dot. Uh, we can put here. I'm a little used to with R. So data two dot describe. This will give us uh, the. You can see here now we're getting the minimum value of recent is one and the 25 percent of the people have done the transaction or trading before five days. And uh, there are certain set of customers who are between 25 percentile to 50 percentile. There are certain customers who are between 50 percentile to 75 percentile, and some customer between 75 to the max. 
So you see, you, you get the quartile values. So the first quartile customers lie between the min to 25 percentile, second quartile values lie between 25 percentile to 50, third between 50 to 75, and fourth between 75 to max. Right. So now this is where you have done the simple uh, idea. I mean, you have simply implemented the concept where uh, uh, we calculated RFM. Now based on that, we can simply create some functions to assign a particular quartile value, Q1, Q2, or Q3, to the customer. Right? So by looking at this particular table, and uh, we can assign them up that, okay, this customer belongs to this particular uh, set of values, or this customer belongs to this particular set of values. Right? In, in, you can see when you look at the, this monetary, in monetary, when the minimum values come, there is something called negative, minus 4287, which is vague value. Somebody cannot do negative transactions on a particular portal. That means there's something wrong in the data, which we did not clean, right? So we should have looked at uh, the minimum value of quantity and the minimum value of unit price. Okay. So if I look at that data dot quantity dot min, so the minimum value of quantity is minus 80,000, which is not possible, right? So we should drop all the values of quantity, which is less than zero. And uh, then, then we should go ahead for the right. We should, we could have done that part. So this is how we go ahead with a particular understanding and uh, uh, you can say segment or the customers into certain set of quartiles and then analyze that, okay, this customer belongs to this quartile. So that's how the customer should be uh, marketing uh, based on this particular table, which you can see right now here, which the customer belongs to 111 is the most important one, but no need for spending money on providing some price incentives. So to whom we should spend money for price incentives for those who belong to 311 and 411. Okay. And those belong to 444. Those are not, uh, those should not be much focused customers. Uh, so as to spend money to reacquire them up. Well, so that's the overall idea so far and much more about the second part of it. How do we find out the, who are the best customers you need to attend the course? And uh, so that's why interesting part is uh, lying up into the course. We are science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, but deep learning. Uh, related courses are available at Tickton Dorian for more details. You can look at the courses available over here and let me know now if you have any questions to talk to me. Any question doubts or how you have regarding the session that we have and uh, well the complete code will also be made available to you. We'll be looking at the I mean getting at the email and let me know if you have any questions to It seems we are good so far. Well, so uh, you can check out more courses on uh, our portal, text.in, and uh, you can check out some more blogs and tutorials as well available at text.in slash blogs. And uh, thank you all for attending the webinar and uh, I'll see you all so soon in the uh, any of the batches coming up for artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, or for data science. Thank you all for joining and uh, have a good night, have a good day, bye-bye.